Let's talk about our Lord and Savior, the Simple series. It's a series of budget games started by D3 Publisher in Japan in the PlayStation 1 era to produce some games which could be sold cheap and made even cheaper. The series really peaked with the PlayStation 2 era, the Simple 2000 series, and it peaked even further when an Italian publisher, 505 Games, started bringing a huge number of those games over to Europe. You know, after localizing them. With varying degrees of quality. Anyway, I've already done quite a few games. But I have more left. So let's see what I've got. Okay, I think, um, quite clearly, I've got a problem. Yes. Um, let's, let's sort this out. Alright, so these are the Riho Futaba games, which I've done ages ago, and I don't want to go back to them. Even though I haven't finished these last two, Zombie Hunters, but those last bosses were complete bullshit. And I think I'm going to add one more game to this pile, without actually recording it, and that is Heartbeat Boxing. You know, the cover isn't particularly you know, alarming or threatening, but... Actually, even without the models, this would have been a fairly mediocre boxing game, and yes, it's, it's actually trying to be a boxing game as opposed to world fighting, which was trying to bring all fighting styles together. This is a mediocre boxing simulator. The problem with it is that the final bosses, the final two or three characters, are completely broken. The AI can only be beaten by following a very strict sequence of moves. Oh, hey, look, it's, it was made by Tamsoft, the company which makes a lot of these games, for some reason. I'm going to put this aside because I won't be able to get even to the final boss. Uh, not even beating the final boss. And here's a game I've done, Space War Attack. Now, I gotta say, the original Japanese cover of this one is far more impressive, but I think we got exactly what this game was promising, and we unleashed the power of AAA and fought giant worms, giant scorpions, and jellyfish? Oh no, that, that's, that's one of the training missions. So this was a mission, this was a game, not by Tamsoft. Yeah, Tamsoft is not very good at flight simulators. Looking at you, Demolition Girl. Moving on in alphabetical order, we've got a game which was reduced in price seemingly more than once until it cost 99p. Impressive. And this is, of course, the Battle Construction Vehicles, which is a terrible, terrible game. I mean, the premise that this is a one-on-one -on -one fighting game uh, with construction vehicles as the fighters is actually pretty exciting, except um, it's broken many men, many people in general, not just because of its homophobic humor, but because well, the controls are so bad. Great 16 stage story mode, you know. The controls are so bad that if you call someone from another room and hand them the controller, unless they've played the game before, they wouldn't be able to tell which of the vehicles on the screen they're controlling until they lose. Or win. It's kind of really, really random. So, you know what? I'm not going to risk doing this. I'm going to put it aside. Now, this one, however, I'm kind of excited about. This is a um, covert command. And as you can see, it rates itself five, five stars out of, I don't know, a hundred. And it's a game about running around and shooting things. And it kind of works. It tries to be a tactical third-person shooter game. You can, as you can see, you can crawl. And you can pick your loadout and there is a weight limit and you unlock weapons as you go through the campaign. It's kind of like a very, very, very cheap, hidden and dangerous. 
I'm definitely going to do this one. Though I'm not sure about super 30 missions. They're just 30 missions. Next up is Darwin. Look at this cover. Now, really, take this cover in. Look at these... savages. And whatever this is. And this deadly elephant. And the bird. And... And those dinosaurs? Okay, so this game is not exactly chronologically correct. But what kind of game is it? Well, it's a game in which you take this monkey, a tribe of these monkeys, and gradually turn them into fat, balding men wearing clothes. Now, it doesn't show on the screenshots, but this is in fact a Pikmin clone. Yes. So, I'll definitely try to give this game a shot. Although it's very annoying in the early stages because you can only collect like one item from a location, then you have to go back to your village, then another, then you know, go ba back out, collect another item. And the problem with that is that you need to do that because that's how your village levels up. And you unlock more gear, more options. There's crafting. But this could be fun. And here is an obligatory beat them up game. Oh, this character I believe appeared in one of the zombie hunters games. I think in the second one. Yes. They were bonus characters. This is a... Yeah, this is a fighting game. Actually, a 2D beat them up game. With completely broken mechanics. Uh, such as, for example, the ability to dodge an attack and immediately deal damage to every single enemy on the screen. And that's normal, that's just how the game works. In fact, if you don't do this, I'm pretty sure you won't be able to win. Also, for some reason, these main characters are remarkably stupid, but maybe that's just a translation. Uh, the Legend, the Global Defense Force. Or just Global Defense Force. This game is actually the second one in the series. The first one was released in Europe as Monster Attack. I don't think you should be doing this one, because the Vita port of this game is much better. And really, it's been superseded by all the other EDF games. That is pretty cool. I'm leaving it aside. But, there is also this. Global Defense Force Tactics. Actually, wait, are they using the same art? Give me a moment. They are using the same art. Lovely. Okay, so this one is actually a turn-based, hex-based tactics game. 50 stages, 250 weapons, use them all. Uh, yeah, you know, I've beaten... I could show a map of this game, a stage, because I've beaten about 5, and I definitely cannot take all 50. This is... Um, what do you call it? A Battle Isle clone, a Nictaris clone, so it's kind of similar to Advanced Wars, Famicom Wars, those kind of games. Only this one is hex-based. Also, your squad of EDF troopers, which frequently outnumbers the aliens, gains experience and new weapons. And there are battle animations not shown in the back cover. So this could be fun for one mission exactly. Okay, Metropolis Mania 2 is a city builder. I was kind of waiting for the first game to arrive, but it got stuck in the mail. I'm not sure I should be doing this one because I terribly suck at city builders, but I gave it a shot and... You know, it's a unique city builder in that you run around the city yourself, like your mayor is a character, and you talk to all the characters in the city to find out what they want and how they can help you. For example, if somebody tells you, we need police here, well, you, you run around the city asking everyone, do you know anyone who can build a police station in our city? And eventually they tell you. Hopefully. But yeah, this is a lot about running around and making people your friends. 
In fact, it has multiple levels, and if you make many friends in earlier levels, you can go and start with those people as your friends in the next map, on the next map. You know, I don't think I should be doing this one because, again, I really suck at city builders and my city basically is constantly exploding in unrest, people leaving, people not getting what they want. I mean, okay, it's realistic, but not fun to watch. Here's a cute game with a terrible cover. Radio Helicopter. Why is there a reflection? Nobody knows. This is a game about a kid who got another radio helicopter and he's flying around doing missions. There is even a story. I did say another helicopter because this is the second game in the series. And, well, the first one was released on the PlayStation 1 and nobody played it, so... Uh, they should have just removed the references to it from the story, but they didn't. Immediate fun. You don't often see that, right? Immediate fun. Yeah, the, the very first mission in the game is flying around a helicopter, flying around a, a garden with a helicopter outfitted with a water gun and shooting cats. So it's not, it's not entirely terrible. It can be funny. Now, since this is the second game in the series, and this game, a radio helicopter 2, is quite clearly the second game in a different series. Yeah, completely unrelated. There is no story, there is just a mode where you fly around a huge building, a huge house, and you do things and eventually unlock stuff. Not sure if I can stomach this one. It requires precision and it doesn't save your progress until you transition from one room to another. That's annoying. But I could briefly show it off. Oh, by the way, incident, uh, 505 Games also released this. Radio Helicopter for the Wii. It's, I think, an, another entirely unrelated game. And it features motion controls. Which doesn't sound like a good idea. And it isn't, trust me. Alright, this game is a legend, and... Wow, look at this price. The Sniper 2 for £38. Ah, wow, these guys are insane. Now, I'm not going to do this game because it's been done to death. It's a, it's a legendary title in the series. There is nothing I can add to it. It's... Yeah, there are, there are many people who are far better at this game than I can ever be. Which is kind of sad. But I'm not going to shame people for liking these simple 2000 games. I've got quite a lot of them myself. Splattermaster. Not Splatterhouse, Splattermaster. If I weren't so terrible at beat em up games, I probably would have done this game, but this is not my area of expertise. So I would be utterly terrible and I wouldn't be able to get the best ending. But yes, it's, it's a game about a cute scarecrow, boy, cursed boy I think, running around with a chainsaw and killing cutesy things and fighting really annoying bosses. So, uh, let's put it aside. Okay, this is a good one. Moderate violence. Six bucks for three days. No, I don't think that's enough. You should pay people more to take this one. Uh, so, um, how many stars does, does this one have? One, two, three, four, eight stars. Nice. Right, so this is a game about uh, Special forces running around and to taking out terrorists and freeing hostages and stuff. Now, the game advertises itself as a game which allows you to choose to arrest or kill your enemies. That's not correct. You know, if you kill people, that deducts from your score. You know, the best way to get points is to approach people from behind, tap them on the shoulder and then arrest them. Very politely. This is how this game works. And also it promises, what, uh, 37 missions? Yeah, it's got about 10 maps, so there will be a repeat. Uh, also, every single weapon in this game is a knockoff with a 
change name or number or something. And your special forces unit starts the game with, what is it? Uh, yes, AZ-37. Oh no, AZ-47. Not AK, AZ. Zombie Virus. Originally titled Zombie vs. Ambulance. This game is awesome, though I haven't played much of it, but I know of it. It's a cross between Crazy Taxi and Carmageddon. You drive around the city, rescuing civilians from zombies, uh, run zombies over, and that somehow helps you to upgrade your ambulance. Like, you can put a tank engine into it, put some armor, spikes. So yeah, this is, a, this is an awesome game, in concept. A bit cheap in execution, but that's simple to thousand for you. It's not like anyone else is going to make a game about running zombies over in an ambulance. This brings us to the Nintendo DS games, which no one bothered to localize as far as I know. So they all stayed in Japan, but luckily the DS is regional free, and these games emulate pretty well. So this is a simple DS Volume 31. The... Um, um, I don't read Japanese. Okay, so this is... Um, you see the sprite work? Here's a bit of a, that metal slug vibe. This is a 2D platformer about customizing your own tank and uh, going out there and killing things. It's pretty good, actually. I'm looking forward to doing this one. You can get, like, double jam guided missiles, machine guns, artillery, lots of stuff. It's awesome. The something something volume 39. This is the firefighting game. Which is. It's a generic third person shooter, but with firefighting, and you've got three firefighters who gain experience independently and also get tired when they go on missions, so you need to rotate the crew. Oddly enough, made by Tamsoft. Hey, remember the time when Tamsoft made games which were not just titty stuff? Neither does Tamsoft. I'm not sure about doing this one. I've got... I think Firefighter FD18 will be more fun. And this game is definitely not as incredible as Fire Heroes was. I'd rather do Firefighter FD18. Yeah, volume 41. I think it's a game about bomb defusal squad. I don't know why I bought a game about defusing bombs when I don't know... I cannot read or understand the instructions to defusing bombs, but this character list is uh, pretty impressive. And look at this. I don't know why... why there are camels? But there are camels. So these are the main characters of the game. Bert, not Bort, not Bart, just Bert. There's Apollo, who is... a girl, I think? There's a dino, a dog with a very strange skeleton structure. And Boss M, who has either a huge ass or a man hiding there. This is, I think, supposed to be our boss. It's a strange game. I haven't gotten far in it. I haven't even exploded once yet. Uh, I think... It's a maybe. This, however, is something I'd really love to do. This is uh, the... Uh, um, 34. And this is... Um, the Dentist game. Yes. Strangely enough, also made by Tamsoft. And yes, it's a game about uh, doing dentistry on live human beings. Also, I think there's some kind of business management side to the game, though I don't know. Because, again, I don't speak Japanese and I'm not a dentist. Not sure why I got this one. But I could try to use the trial and error method to figure out how to dentist people. That shouldn't cause much harm, right? The game is actually surprisingly extensive modeling of dental treatments, like you can drill teeth, you can put in fillings, you can brush teeth, there is... there is... more fillings. Oh yes, you can also pull teeth out. 
uh, more fillings. Wow, this is it's like it's like dentistry is just fillings. Ah, yes, here's pulling teeth out. Pretty rotten tooth that one. Uh, brushing, cleaning teeth. Ah, uh, yes, root canal. Yes, you can do root canal in this game. Could you do root canal in Metal Gear Solid Five? No, you couldn't. But in this game, you can. Ah, uh, yes, everything, screwing things into the jaw. And I guess this is the kill counter. I'd love to try this game, though. I have no idea how anything in it works. Well, look at this tooth. This tooth is awesome. I guess I'll need to find someone who will be able to tell me anything about, um, you know, teeth in Japan. What do they do with teeth in Japan? I won't be able to do this game by myself. Without a lot of trial and error. So, next time I'm going to start with Covert Command. Is he holding? Yes, I think it's a Thompson. I'm pretty sure you don't get a Thompson until, like, halfway through the campaign. It's very strange, this one.